Okay, uh, so this week we will see how we can uh, establish a logistic regression model and also a support backed machine model uh, in right miners. So first, let's download data for this week's lab. So this week we are going to use a house price label dot uh, XLSX file. So let's download that one. And by default, it will download it to my download folder. And next, let's go to right miner. And for this um, lab, so let's create a subfolder. Uh, let's call it lab5. OK. And next, we are going to import the data. So because this week, uh, we are going to use a new data set. So let's say import data and in my computer. And that's in my download folder. OK, so downloads folder, so uh, house price label. And next, let's review the data. So uh, we still have the house type that I create a new columns indicating that whether or not that house is single family home or not. So if that is single family home, it is one. If not, it is zero. OK, and also we have the other features like number of bedroom, bathrooms, the, the year that house has been built, which uh, I call it house age, which is not accurate, but I just call it house age uh, for short. Lot size, the area of the house, and also the price of the house. So next, uh, now you can see that they are all recognized as different data type, like price, integer, um, year, uh, year of the house, that uh, integer, and also is single, so it's also an integer. OK, so now let's say we save the imported data into our lab 5 folder, and we say finish. So now you can see uh, the house is loaded. Uh, so you can use a turbo prep to uh, auto clean your data. So in this case, our data is already clean, so we don't need to do that. Uh, so in this case, we do have more examples. So we have more than 600 records. And if you go to the statistics, you can see we don't have any missing values. That's nice. And also you can see the different type of house. And uh, you can see most of the house are single family home. And also um, more than half is a single family home. OK. And we can also visualize the data first. So for example, if we create a scat plot uh, where we see the x, uh, let's choose uh, the house being built and also the, the values. So let's choose the price. And for the color, so let's choose if that a single family home or not. OK, and here we can see that uh, for the most recent houses, if the price is lower, so those are not single family home. So if the price are higher, that are built in the recent years, they are single family home. Uh, if they are built in the past and also they are priced even they are lower, so they are also single family home. Okay, so that's how the data look like. Uh, next, let's go to the design view and let's drag our house to our uh, process. And because we, uh, we only care about uh, a few features, so Let's select the attribute first. OK, so we only care about a subset of our data. So to be more specific, we want the house that has been built. Is that a single family home or not? And also the price of the house. We only care about those three attributes. So let's, do, let's use the select attribute uh, operator. Next, you can see that is single is not considered number. So to do a classification in right manner, we have to convert that one into categorical data. So um, so here let's search the operator that called two binomial because um, 
This is binary data. So let's say search numeric to binomial. And let's link two operators together. And next, let's select the, this operator. And we just want to convert a single attribute to binomial. That is, is the house being single or not? OK. So we convert the data type from a number into binary. So that will, that will allow us to do, do, do a classification. Next, we also want to tell the right miner that is single or not is our label. So let's use the set rule operator. And here we tell right miner that now you can see the, the symbol is changed from the number into categorical data, nominal data. And is single should be our label. Okay, so is single should be our label. And let's connect the process to the final output and let's run. Okay, so here we can see that is single now uh, has two values, true or false. If that is single family home, it is true. If not, that is false. And also the year that house been built and also price. Okay. So that's pretty nice. And now if we visualize the data, so we can we can have the same pattern. Okay. So we can see that the uh, the most recent built house, if the price are cheaper, they are highly likely not single family home. Although we do have some house that are uh, very expensive. And if the house are built in the past year, so it also like highly like that they are single family home. Okay. Okay, that's great. Uh, so next, let's save our process actually. So let's say we save this process, we click this folder, and then we save it. Uh, actually, it's, you don't need to click that folder, and let's call it lab5. Okay, so let's save our um, process. So next, we, go, we are going to bring the logistic regression model. So there are a lot of models, so we can just simply search logistic. And we are going to use logistic regression model. We also have the logistic SVM. Uh, so let's just use the logistic regression model. OK. And here you can see there are several uh, options. Do you want standardized? Do you want add interpreter, calculate p-values, remove culinary col uh, columns, and also do you want to use regular uh, zivalization? Okay, so do you want to use that one? So uh, if you want to add read more about those, uh, you can just uh, click those uh, exclamation mark and all the info icon so they can tell you more details about those parameters. So for now, let's just keep using the default parameters, which normally are, the, are good. Uh, so now we have our model, and we want to see the accuracy of the model. And also we want to see the predicted result. So let's see, once we have the model, we want to apply the model. So we link the model to the apply model. And next, we can just pass the data. OK, we can pass the data to our apply model uh, operator so that we can apply the training, apply the model to the training data itself. Uh, so if you remember that, you can just uh, drag this uh, data from set rules into this apply model. And you can make a copy, OK? So that means that you can uh, copy the data so that you can use the data for the training the model and also you can use the data, apply data for to the same model. Uh, so however, we can also delete that operator. So however, uh, if you look at the operators of this regression model, they also have this um, uh, examples here. So that means that you can also just uh, link the uh, training data to this apply model directly. So that give you the same data set that you link from the set rule operator. Okay, so that is a very convenient way. So next, we're going to uh, also 
calculate the performance. So to calculate the performance, we need to search the performance parameter. Um, and here you should be careful that for performance, you can do the performance for classification, by our nominal classification and also regression. So we definitely do not want to use regression. But you can choose classification or binomial classification. Uh, if you look at the bottom, you can see the recommended operators. So most users will use performance for the binomial uh, classification. So that is fine. So let's just use that one. So we use a predictor re um, result to the performance. And next, let's report the performance. And also, let's also report the predict result. So we will report three items. So the model itself, the performance of the model, and also the predict result. And for the performance operator, so we want to see the accuracy. We also want to see the kappa. So the kappa is just compare the fitness between uh, the predict result and also original result. So it's another way to measure the accuracy. And personally, I prefer using Kappa instead over using accuracy. So accuracy is still very important, but personally, I will still check Kappa. Uh, let's also check the precision recall and also F1 scores. F1 score is here. All right, so that is our model. Okay, so we load the data. Select the attribute, convert the nominal, convert numbers into nominal data. We set the nominal data, the whether or not being single family as a label, as a label, and we apply a logistic regression model. So we have that logistic regression model. We apply that model to the training data, and we calculate the performance of the model that applying on training data. So in this lab, we are not going to do a split test. So we are we are not going to see whether or not the model overfit. So let's now run the model, What run the process. Okay, uh, so here we have the result. So you can see that predict result, and that is the, um, the true result. So you can see uh, it looks like pretty good. Uh, so they all match with each other. So here this is a wrong prediction. Okay. Um, so that you can see for this price and also for this range, the model predict that that is the single family home, but actually it is not. So that is an error. Uh, but if you look at the confidence, you can see that the confidence uh, uh, to be a single family home is actually not very high. So that um, uh, so that's why that you can see that an error. But for the other confidence that you can see if the confidence are very high, so normally they are accurate uh, predictions. Okay. Uh, next, let's visualize the decision boundary first. So let's say we go to the visualization and see we see that X still be the year the house been built, the Y it will be the price of the house, and the color, let's choose the predicted predicted uh, label. And so now you can see the decision boundary is linear. Okay, the decision boundary for the logistic regression is linear. So everything below this line will be will be predicted non-single family home, and everything that above this line will predict as a single family home. So that means we do have some errors. So if you recall the true data, you can see we do have some uh, non-single family home in those regions, and also we do have some single family home that are in a lower corner. Okay, so this is the predicted uh, decision boundary. And let's look at the performance. Uh, so the accuracy is almost 80%, so that's okay, that's not bad. But if you look at Kappa, so it's, it's very low, so it's, it's not very not that good. Uh, precision is fine, uh, recall is fine, and also F, uh, F metal is also great, it's good, uh, but the Kappa is very, very low.
Okay, so Kappa is very, so personally, I prefer using Kappa over using everything. Uh, if you look at the model itself, on scale, we can see that the z-value, p-value, and also coefficient, and also standard coefficient. Okay, so remember that those are coefficients that are within the, that logistic function. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so that is logistic regression model. So now let's go back to the design view. Uh, so uh, logistic regressions, still the decision boundary will still be linear. Um, we can also apply regularization. So if we click this operator and we say we choose regularization, and remember that here uh, uh, we can use lasso or ridge. So uh, if you change different alpha in right manner, you can use either lasso or, or ridge. Okay, uh, so let's here let's try. Uh, one of them so that here we are using one so one for lasso so let's use lasso and here you can try the lambda okay uh, so some models we are just called c parameters and in right minor it is still called lambda so let's say we give the lambda like um uh, 0 0.5 point zero five, and let's see how that will look like Okay, and you can see kappa is zero. Okay, uh, we still have a decent uh, accuracy, but kappa is zero. So the reason is because if we go back to the visualization, you can see that uh, it is very, very too simple. The model is too simple. So it just classify all the houses into single family home. Okay, so it just classify all the single houses into single family home. And so if you look at accuracy, you can see there's nothing to be a single family home. Okay, oh, no, there's nothing to be non-single family home. So everything will be single family home. And so this is also a reason that why I prefer Kappa over accuracy. So if here model, uh, the model predicts everything to be single family home, so basically, the model does nothing, I would say. The, the model does nothing. However, we still have very high accuracy because there are a lot of houses that originally are single family homes. So if we use this number divided by this number plus this number, so we still have a decent accuracy. But Kappa can capture that change. So Kappa can tell that, okay, the, the model is doing nothing here, okay? Uh, so that's why that we have zero that come because the, the model just blindly classify all the houses into a single family home. And if you look at the precisions, it's still okay. Uh, recall is 100% and F1 score is also pretty good, but Kappa is very, very high, uh, very, very low. So that's why I personally, I prefer using Kappa than using um, the accuracy. Okay, so now let's say we give it a little bit lower uh, lambda or a little bit smaller uh, penalty. And let's see how that looks like. Okay, you can see the kappa is increased a little bit. Okay, uh, so that is because we do have some house that are uh, predict as non-single fam home, although that are mistake but the model is indeed are doing something. So if now we visualize data, we can see there are some houses that are predicted as a non-single family home. Okay, uh, sorry, here those are those are right. So those are false and also we predict as false. So those are accurate. So those are the right result, sorry. Um, so in, they, they, they have correctly predicted some house as non-single family home. So they did uh, make some predictions. And accuracy is still higher, so that's because we do have a lot of houses that are a single family home. Uh, if we continue uh, decrease the lambda, uh, so the accuracy will be higher. Okay, you can see the accuracy is always almost the same as without uh, using the regularization. Okay, 
So that is all we can also apply regularization on the logistic regression models. Uh, next, let's try the SVN. So let's uh, first let's say we save the process and we disable um, this operator and let's search SVM. Okay, so we have SVM and also we have a linear SVM. So let's bring the linear SVM first. Okay, so we uh, feed the data and also we have the model and also we put the model, apply the model to the same training data. Um, and here you can see, do you want to scale your data or not? So by default, uh, it is checked so that the result will be scaled. So here, let's say we don't want to check the scale. So let's see how that will look like. Remember that for SVM, uh, you should scale the data. So let's say we don't scale the data, so how it will look like. And then we'll keep everything the same. Uh, so they can see they still make some predictions. And but however, the accuracy and the copper is, is very, very low because we didn't scale the data. Okay, uh, so now let's go back. Let's say, okay, we, we do want to scale the data. Okay, and now let's see how the model will work. Okay, so now if we go check performance, it's, it's higher, if I remember correctly, it's higher than the regression models, but still not very, very high data. Uh, accuracy is good, precision, recall, and also F1 score is also good. And if we go to see the decision boundaries, okay, so that is predicted, we can see we still have the linear decision boundary because we assume that the relationship is linear. Uh, in this um, linear model, and so that is the SVM. Okay, so the description is very simple. And here we do have the C parameters. Okay, uh, we don't have gamma here because we are using linear. So the, for the C parameters, so you can try to change different C parameters. Okay. Uh, so let's say. We, so remember that the lower C indicate the more restricted model, and the higher C indicate a less restricted model or a more complicated model. So let's say we give a higher C value. Okay, and now let's run it. Okay, and you can see the kappa increased a little bit. Okay, but not that. Um, bigger but still it it did increase because it is a a, a more complicated model uh, but still the the prediction uh, the decision boundary is still linear okay so it is a more complicated so probably it will be uh overfit with the training data uh, so it is a, a more complicated or less restrictive model okay uh, so now let's Again, disable this one. So let's drag the default SVM model. Okay, and we link those model. Okay, and now you can see here we also still have the uh, C parameters, and we can change the different kernel types. So this, so this is where you can define the kernel functions. So remember the kernel tree. Uh, so let's use, you can use polynomial, Gaussian, and also that. In this case, let's use radio. And here you can see you can change the gamma parameter. Okay, so gamma determines how far that you can reach uh, <coughs> in your kernel. Uh, so right now, let's keep everything as default. Radio and also gamma as 1, C as 0, and also scale checked. And so now let's see how the model looks like. Okay, so let's first check the accuracy. Uh, we can see the comma kappa is higher than the linear, so without changing the C values. Uh, let's look at the decision boundary. Okay, and it still looks like a, a linear decision boundary. Okay, uh, so if you just 
drag a box and you can actually you can zoom in. Okay, so still a, like a linear decision boundary. Uh, so now let's say we want change to the parameters. So let's say we want change to the C values and also the gammas. So let's say we want to use a higher C. So normally uh, the C become higher, the model will be more complicated. Uh, so the accuracy should be higher. Okay, I think the cover did increase uh, a little bit. Um, now let's say we want also change the gamma. So let's say we want to change that one to 10. So again, so if we have higher uh, gamma, so the model will also be more complicated. Okay, now you can see the cover is 0.6. Probably that is the highest one that we right now we have. And now if we go to the visualization, so now we can see the decision boundary is no longer linear. Uh, so if we zoom in, we can see some points are classified as uh, non-single family house, and also some are classified as single family house. So in this case, the decision boundary is no longer linear. Uh, so if we compare this one with original data, okay, and see here the accuracy will be higher, okay. Uh, so that's why we have high accuracy and also high cover. So um, that is because we change the gamma and also C to be higher values. So the model will be more complicated, and also model will highly likely to overfit the training data. So if you do want to see that whether or not it fit with, or is overfit or not, so uh, the best way is to do a split test. So you split the data part to train the model and also part to test the model. 